studies have shown, uh, very good studies, I think, from the occupational literature have shown that uh, a, a certain level of exposure in the envi ambient environment over you know, a certain period of time will produce uh, you know, a certain level of cobalt in blood and a certain level of cobalt in urine. But then you come from the, from the perspective of the occupational uh, literature and the standards that tells us that above five, uh, you know, you've got to remove somebody from, from exposure, then you can't take them from below five as normal. How do you advise uh, a patient, your client, um, um, what they should do if they're not having any uh, problems with their hips, they're not experiencing any pain, they, it's, they're, they're, their implant appears to be functioning just fine. They're not having any gait problems, they're going about their normally, normal activities, they're not having any evidence of heightened cobalt and chromium. You know, how do you advise that individual as a, as a scientist or, or an attorney? Right? I, think, I think the advice for that individual really first and foremost has to come with, from, their, from their treating, uh, treating surgeon, from their, from their treating physicians. Um, you, know, you can advise them of, of the things that they need to be aware about, you know, the, different, um, the different issues, the, the different aspects of this issue, surrounding this issue that they need to take up with their physician so that they're getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction and assurance from from their physician that their physician is at least aware of it and, and, and you know and, and entertaining entertaining these issues but but as I said before my expectation is that that treating surgeon or that treating doc is in a better position for that individual patient he's got a whole lot more information he or she should have a whole lot more information and sort of other tests uh, and is and is, is really in a difficult position I, I think that 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 treating docs really in a, in a difficult position to interpret the risk-benefit uh, analysis that, that has to be done here for these individual patients. Uh, you know, you've got this issue of, uh, you know, potential long-term health consequences due to, um, uh, due to this exposure, um, uh, together with the, you know, the risk of another surgery for an otherwise uh, hip that appears to be functioning fine. Uh, you've got the uh, the risk of initiating additional long-term biomechanical problems uh, because you're responding to something that, as you just said, you don't really know whether you should be concerned about that or not.